just bought a new snowmobile and you want to replace the studs that are in it. Maybe they're just worn out. We're going to take a little bit here and show you how to take those studs out, put some new snow studs in, and show you some of the differences in design between ours and the others on the market. Stick around. This will be a quick video, but it'll give you a lot of good detail. Take a look at the two different studs here that we're talking about. The original competitor stud on the left that was installed and then the new snow studs stud on the right. Snow stud stud uses an Allen head versus a Torx head on this uh, competitor stud. Big difference in grip when you're trying to take these off. If you look at the Torx bit, this is after one attempt to take one nut off and that trying to hold that stud, it, it, it twisted that bit almost immediately. You do get corrosion between an aluminum nut and a plated steel stud and the, you just can't get the grip on a Torx bit to be able to hold it to get those nuts off. And you're going to need to do it one day. The next thing is the difference in the shoulder design. On the left you see it's like a tapered shoulder on the competitor stud versus snow studs has a locking collar on their stud. What happens is when you tighten down a backer on this stud you're gonna pull that stud through the track and you're gonna pull that shoulder over the backer whereas the snow studs backer locks in tight to the shoulder so when you pull that down get that tension on there it holds it in place and locks it tight you do not get that on this tapered shoulder stud here's a side shot as you look at the backer on the stud you can see that there is a gap that's maintained because of that shoulder. So even if you try to over tighten this thing you're not going to pull that stud through the track because that shoulder protects it. And that gap is maintained keeping it nice and tight. A couple examples here of these backers that I took off or I was taking off and uh, pretty much every single one of these was bent and as they bend they start wallowing out the holes. This next one in particular you can really see how it's wallowed out but it also puts the tips together so the tips of the studs are actually close together and really not giving you the traction that you need. This one's really bad. Now let's compare that to the Snow Studs backer. It's a whole different design. It is an aluminum alloy. Much stronger, much more durable. You're not going to get that folding in half effect that you're getting on these standard backers that you see here. This is just a very soft aluminum. I don't know if there's any hardness in there beyond just the standard aluminum. The way they bend, I don't think so. You can also see how the nut has actually, because it gets loose, worked its way into the face of the backer, making it even worse. So uh, just, I'm astounded. This is two seasons with these backers on now. and This is a, a new Snow Studs backer and you'll see these once these are put on here. What a uh, difference in design those make. So a little hard to uh, hold the grinder and the camera at the same time. So I'm just kind of show you here what I do with this cutoff wheel. I use a four inch cutoff wheel and I basically cut the nut at the stud about a third of the way around the stud. So I take two cuts, one on the left, one on the right. As you see, I'm trying to hold the grinder here to show you. So we take this top third off basically from there to there that exposes about a third of that stud and then with the channel locks pry that off of there. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You just have to kind of trial and error your way through. So here are the nuts. They're ground down. You can see the threads of the stud through there. Um, both of these are ground down about a third of those off again. I'm gonna take that channel locks, try to pry these things off of here. So not always easy. Sometimes they come off easy, sometimes they don't. This one in particular uh, wasn't too bad. The one on the left, uh, as you see here, it's still on there. I have fought, a li fought it a little bit, but uh, didn't get it off yet. There's a shot of what is left of the nut, and then you're able to get those backers out. They give you an idea. When they move around on there, when those backers are moving, you can see how much wallows out that hole, and that's why that one was just spinning around. 
So take those two off. Then what I do, I have the belt off of the uh, the clutch, obviously, so I can move the track. I'm just going to roll this forward here to the point where I can get my hammer in there. Take my hammer and just tap those two through there. There, A lot of them fell through, but uh, some of them need a little persuading from the hammer. I like to do uh, a row at a time. So I know I punch two through there. I pick the other two studs off the backside. And then I know I have everything so they're not stuck in the track. Got a quick shot here of the head of the stud. You'll see this is the Torx head, so that's the competitor's stud. This is an Allen head, so this is the snow stud. One of the big differences is all the heads are chamfered on the snow studs, so you have a nice smooth transition between the belt and the head. What that does is as these bogey wheels are rolling around, uh, it allows it to roll over gently, whereas if you look at this one from the competitor head, it is a straight 90 degree edge there. So that will damage bogey wheels over time. And people don't think about it, and then they all of a sudden they're blowing through bogey wheels and can't figure out why. But that is a major cause of that. Take a little different shot here. Look at one of the uh, double backer setups, in this case with the snow studs head you can see that chamfered edge on there. So that allows that bogey wheel to roll over those very nicely. They don't stick out far. They're nice and flush with the track to begin with, but uh, you don't have any of that harshness that you do on those other studs. Much better design, longer life out of your bogey wheels, longer life out of the stud. Just doesn't get damaged as much. Here's a good side angle shot of the studs and backers through the track. This is a 136 inch track, inch and a quarter lug height, the W84 Warthog stud from Snow Studs with the aluminum backers, both doubles and singles. Pattern on this is two doubles and then two singles alternating throughout the the track. Obviously varying the location so you have a good uh, solid surface to pick into. These W84s give you good penetration on this inch and a quarter track. If you need any help with fitment, just give us a call 833-353-8241. We're FletcherProducts.com. Be happy to help you pick your proper traction products for your snowmobile. We have an application guide for every snowmobile make and model made. Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch a video. I'm going to pop a couple pictures in here at the end just to show you uh, what they look like after 320 miles of varied trail riding, both, both uh, road crossings and whatnot. Give you a good idea of how these things wear. Again, lifetime, no bend, no brake guarantee from Snow Studs as well. So good quality product. You'll enjoy the hell out of these things. Thanks for watching our video. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at FletcherProducts.com. Our number is 833-353-8241, extension 1. We'll be able to help you with fitment to your particular snowmobile. If you've got questions about the installation, the removal of old studs, any of that, we'll be happy to help you. We also carry carbide runners for every brand out there. Best runners on the market. Love to talk to you. Again, FletcherProducts.com or 833-353-8241 or 833-FLETCH1. Thanks for watching.